Understanding basic healing items and how passive healing works in Space Station 14 can be rather important in helping yourself out, and even as a medical doctor, it can be useful to understand these values. All species in the game except slimes will heal passively as long as they have less than 20 damage maximum, and every time it ticks, you will heal 0 .07 heat damage, 0 .02 blunt slash, and 0 .03 pierce. So if you medically scan yourself, you'll see each second, as a human or any species that's not a slime, you'll heal all those damage types respectively each second, as long as your damage doesn't go over 20. My damage goes over 20, which I'll show right now. The healing will stop immediately and will have no additional benefit. Slimes have it much better and heal twice as fast. They also will passively heal as long as they have uh, less than 65 damage total. So if I hit the slime, they'll heal all those damage types twice as fast, which they also heal heat at an actually pretty decent rate of 0.14 heat damage a second. Like I said, it's just double. And since they can actually keep healing as long as they have less than 65 damage, uh, slimes oftentimes can just kind of disengage from any combat. And honestly, a lot of the time can avoid going to medical entirely as long as you just chill and play passively for a little bit. Slimes are definitely really powerful for small wounds, but slimes also take a lot more piercing damage. So if you're getting shot, you're probably going to go over that 65 damage threshold faster than if you were a normal species anyways. In Space Station 14, there are medicines that are referred to often as topical medicines. It means that you don't need to have any fancy injections, there's no overdose amounts, you can use them on yourself, use them on other people, and these all even work on dead bodies. Cloth is by far the worst topical medicine in the game. It does technically heal some health, but the primary purpose is it's very easy to get cloth and it can stop bleeding. Cloth does actually heal um, 0.5 slash and pierce which is just awful for healing. The primary purpose of cloth, though, is definitely to make gauze, which very quickly you can make, anyone can make gauze in their inventory. Two pieces of cloth will make some gauze. Next is a tourniquet. Tourniquets are interesting. They instantly stop bleeding, but tourniquets actually do additional damage to you. It does a decent bit of blunt slash and pierce, and it even does some asphyxiation, and in that case, it also didn't even seemingly stop my bleeding, but it is instant. So if you're really taking a lot of bleeding instantly, and like say uh, it's mainly good for security officers. Say you just got like shot by like seven or eight bullets, and you know you're gonna die if you don't treat your bleeding instantly. Well, that's what tourniquets are for. It'll instantly stop your bleeding. If you're too close to death, you'll end up critting yourself. So you have to be rather cautious about that. Then there's gauze, which I would just consider just a better option. Gauze actually heals 10 pierce and 5 slash per uh, use, and uh, the very and gauze also stops bleeding, but it's not as in it's not instant like tourniquets. But healing 10 pierce and 5 slash is actually really powerful because those are the two most deadly damage types in the game anyway. And onto a more general medicine, probably the most common topical in the game is a bruise pack. I guess ointment's pretty common too. Uh, bruise packs just heal simply 5 blunt slash and pierce per use evenly so if you have 90 blunt that means you have to use that many uses of a bruise pack it's more so designed for even points of damage but getting evenly damaged across all three brute types isn't super common but bruise packs are really easy to make uh bruise packs can actually be made at a medical tech fab as well as gauze uh bruise packs are really cheap each one is only a quarter of a piece of steel and a quarter piece of plastic Gauze can also be made here, but it's not discounted or anything, but it does make it faster than you would by hand, and it's just easier to manage in general. There's also ointment, which we move on to next. This requires glass and plastic, no steel. Ointment heals 5 heat, cold, and shock. It also heals 0.5 caustic, so like sometimes uh, like AI um, slime mobs will do some caustic damage, but unfortunately, uh, ointment just is really not that amazing for healing that type of damage. There's also alloy cream, which botanists pretty much are the only ones that can make this. If you microwave alloy, it'll turn into alloy cream. Alloy cream is just reskin ointment, which again just heals 5 heat, cold shock, and 0.5 caustic. And then we have the advanced topical medicines. These can't be crafted at a medical tech fab. They require chemistry recipes. There's a very, very helpful website to learn how to make these very easily. It even explains how to cook it efficiently and effectively. The advanced topical medicines, if you don't purchase them, require coordination between botany and chemistry because it requires plants. Regenerative mesh requires alloy, and medicated sutures requires poppies. So again, that's why you need to work closely with botany. 
Uh, this I will share this Steam guide with all of y'all. It is made by Badman. Uh, this is probably the most comprehensive chemistry guide in general, but as to not give you information overload, I'm not going to explain how to make them. Use this website to know how to make them. But I will also explain how to get them without making them. It requires cargo, though, which really what I'm saying is uh, to get advanced topicals, you have to either be a syndicate agent and purchase them, or you have to have access to cargo or botany. Anyways, medicated sutures are just bruise packs, but twice as good. They heal 10 blunt slash and pierce. It also will stop all bleeding upon being used, so that's the suture part. Regenerative Mesh is actually significantly better than Ointment, though, and the reason for that is, is it heals double the amount, so it heals 10 Heat, Cold, and Shock, but it also heals 10 Caustic as opposed to 0.5 Caustic, so this is one of the best methods out there uh, to actually heal people getting attacked by slimes, which is a pretty common occurrence, but it's also not super easy to get your hands on these without good coordination, again, between Botany and uh, Chemistry, or just having Cargo having a lot of extra funds. Now, again, as I mentioned, there's other than making the topicals directly, the Cargo can purchase pretty much every med kit in the game. Uh, the advanced first aid kit is by far the most powerful first aid kit in the game. It comes with a stack of medicated sutures and regenerative mesh, as well as a blood bag, which I did not explain what blood bags do. Blood bags actually do technically heal a little bit of blood loss damage, but the primary purpose of blood bags is to just restore blood to your body. There's not too much more complication than that. Um, just to show you how much blood it actually restores... I'll make myself bleed a little bit, health examine myself, let my blood drop, just a few percent. And if I use a blood bag on myself, once I drop below 94%, about 5% of a person's blood per use. So this can be very useful as an on-the-fly way of putting blood back in somebody's body. If you don't have access to something like iron or whatever other medicines restore blood, I actually don't know them all off the top of my head. Anyways, back to this. The Brute Trauma Pack will actually come with Iron Pills and Copper, speaking of ways of restoring blood, Bruise Pack, and a Roll of Gauze. Burn Treatment is two ointments, Kelatane and Dermaline, pills that are good at healing uh, burn, but we're just focusing on the topicals. The Oxygen Deprivation Kit does not actually have any real topicals. There's an Emergency Medipen, which can be used for stopping bleeding. The Radiation Treatment Kit has another Emergency Medipen, a Rad Auto Injector, Hyronolin, and Phylaxamine, which is, again, treat just different treatments of radiation, but no real topicals. The Toxin Treatment Kit, again, no real topicals. There's the Poison Auto Injector, which I guess you could just kind of refer to as a um, topical. You do apply it pretty instantly. It has Ultravasculine and Epinephrine, so it's good for getting rid of uh, toxins. And then Pills. And then finally, you have just a generic first aid kit. Inside, you have a bruise pack, an ointment, roll of gauze, and trico. Really, your overall general rounder for treatment. Now we're on the subject of beds. Beds heal you every second as well. And normal beds only heal 0.1 blunt and 0.1 poison per second. However, if you sleep, these amounts get tripled. So that means in a normal bed, even if you're infected by something like the zombie virus... You can effectively just sleep off the zombie virus and actually out heal it entirely. Medical beds are a lot better. Medical beds heal 0.2 poison, 0.4 cold, and 0.2 blunt a second. And again, if you're sleeping, it's tripled. So at this point, you could just lay down to stave off the zombie virus if you're infected or sleep and completely out heal it in a matter of seconds. Either way, though, that is the explanation of all the topical medicines in the game. Passive healing and beds to, I guess, boost that passive healing. Thank you for watching.